Nelson and I have a card today to show you that has our new striped weaving die in there. Now I originally designed that to be used with the classic but you can also use it all by itself and it makes a beautiful background. Let me introduce all the different dies we're going to be using today. I have out of the frames and tags I have the refined rectangle frame. Out of the noble dies I am using both the classic adorned rectangles as well as the ornate pierced rectangles. And here is the striped weaving die. Now I have to admit it's not the most exciting die to look at but it does give beautiful results. And then for our sentiment we're going to be using the delightful sentiment stamp set. Now the first thing I want to show you is to do a little bit of letter pressing on our frame here. And I've done, I've gone kind of for what I call a, um, a little bit more of a grungy look. With letter pressing there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can be really neat and tidy, ink it up and then dust away every little particle of embossing uh, powder so it's absolutely perfect or you can just ink it all and go through and that's what I've done here. So I'm going to use this deboss ring in our set and you can see it's got a beautiful design on there. So let me grab my clear perfect medium. I'm going to do a little inking on top of that. There we go. And I'm just going to give it a real good press into that entire pattern. Get that clear ink all the way around there. and keep my fingers off of it but that looks really good. Just to use a piece of paper to keep it off of my, my mat there so let me set that to the side. Bring in our embossing plate. I'm going to be using a piece of milk colored foundations card so carefully turn this over, place this in the center. Now ordinarily I do tape my dies but if I tape this it'll leave a little residue which will pick up the embossing powder so I'm going to just be very careful and run it through like this. The Grand Caliber will transfer the ink from that die onto the card and then we'll use our embossing powder on it. Okay, set this to the side. Now I'll clean that off really well for the next time you use it. And you can see the deboss pattern there and let me just bring that back over. I'll use the opposite side and our bright gold embossing powder. This is one of my favorites. I love this gold. It's so pretty. Tap that off. You can see it picking that up. And I'm sprinkling it all the way around the edge of that. catching all that bits. Now there is a tiny bit here I would say in the middle that you can give it a good flick. We're going to cut the frame later but just keep it around the edge and you can just dust it away with your paintbrush. Make sure you have a nice clean edge for later. And let's emboss and then I'll tidy that up. In fact let's just go from the top. It'll be a little quicker. If you want a smoother emboss you can go from underneath but it does take a little bit longer for the heat to get through the card. Isn't that pretty? It's got a very, um, very much looks like a hammered metal kind of look. Turn that. You can see the embossing powder melt as we go along. Make sure I've got all my little edges. Give it one last little pass over. There we go. I think we've got it. Just give it a quick check. Looks pretty good. Let me tidy this up and then we'll cut that into a frame. Okay, there we go. Save that for later. I find it's easier to do all my deboss and embossing on my letterpress and then go back and use the dies to cut it into a frame. 
bring this out, pop this one into play. That way I can tape it. I don't have any problem with it afterwards. It's already done. That's going to stay there and there. That'll cut the outside. And this one will cut the inside. Line that up with my pattern. Looks pretty good. And a couple pieces to hold that into place. There we go. Bring back my cutting mat. Make sure I'm square in the middle. I'm using the smaller plates, but it does fit. There we go. With the uh, larger dies that are simple like this, you'll hear a lot of cracking going through the machine. It's perfectly normal. That's just the die going into the cutting plate. If you're not aware though, it can be very, very loud and makes you wonder if you've broken something, but it's absolutely normal, especially with simple dies like this. So that is our beautiful frame. Isn't that pretty? Really love the way that comes out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done one ahead of time and I put a little bit of mounting foam on that. So we'll switch and use that one. Let me tidy up a little bit and we'll move forward. Put our dies back into place, always important. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you the weaving die. And I've gone ahead and cut two of these. Anytime you use the weaving die to weave, that's what you'll need to do is cut two of them. Now there is no edge that cuts on the top and the bottom here. The reason I've done that is because you need it to be a little bit longer to give yourself a finger hold. But by increasing that, it would have made the die much more expensive. So just cut the die and then trim off a little extra around it with a paper cutter. Now on one die, you're always gonna leave it attached at the top and then just nip it between each of these. So you have little free ones that go like this. On the second die, what you're going to do is nip both sides. And I've already done the bottom half. I'll go ahead and nip this through. And it just gives you a little bit of a hold so you can move your um, die in place between the weaves doesn't have to be straight, it just needs to be trimmed apart so you can get a hold of it. There we go. All of those. Okay. So, originally this die was meant to go on top of the classic, giving you a little extra strip of color, but I think it's really pretty to use by itself, so why not? So what we're going to do is just bend these up, just get a little bit of a... Um, uh, bend in them so they're easy to maneuver. And I'll do every other one here. There we go. Okay, and then we can take one of our strips face up and pop it into place. Bend that down and then go to the next ones. Just bend that up. And since they're really lightweight, they tend to move around a little bit more, but that's part of the fun of this particular die, I think. It gives you a really pretty look and completely different than the classic also. So we're just gonna pop these into place. There we go. So you can move them as close or as far apart as you like and keep it as open or as um, tight as you want. Totally your call on this one. I've gone somewhere in the middle there. So I'm gonna pop this one in and you're just alternating every other one here, moving that across, get that over and under. So you can see how that's going to sit in there. So I'll pop this one into place and then we'll show you. Okay, move that up and leave it about like that. So I've got a few done there. I went ahead and did one all the way across, but you can see just by alternating every other one down as far as you need it, then you've got your weaving. Now with this one, there's not an area left over that's solid to glue to. So you're gonna wanna tape the edges to keep it all into place, okay? So we'll use this as our base, and then I've gone ahead and put mounting foam on the back of the frame that I prepared. And we will pop this on top of that. And trim around it. Okay, so that's what I want to show through my frame. Just a real pretty little kind of, um, just an interesting pattern. I think it really works well with the letterpress. So, prepared a base card. So we'll go ahead and trim this and then we'll add it to our base. So you're just gonna angle your scissors around this and trim it away. And what's going to hold that into place now is the mounting foam and I'm gonna add a little bit of glue when we secure it down so it shouldn't be any problem at all. Pop that that way, trim that. Catch 
to that last little cut corner. So just using some of the Cosmic Shimmer Dries Clear glue, we'll add that along the edge, right under where the frame would be. There we go. Pop that down into place. Got a little bit of embossing powder there, so center that into my pierced rectangle area there. So I've got a really pretty pattern coming through with the milk card showing through that, that woven area. Now for the center of this card, what I've done is I've cut the refined rectangle and I've used the inner frame on this one. So it cuts like this and then I've used this little rectangle to take out the center and I've added in a piece of vellum that I've stamped on and then I've gone back through and I've just trimmed it right along there with a little bit of mounting foam to hold it so it's you look down into it. So what I want to do is take my glue but only apply it under that edge where the mounting foam is. The reason I chose the vellum is because I thought it'd be really pretty. You would be able to see some of that weaving through it. So just a light bead all the way around that. There we go. I'm going to pop that into place right into the middle. That looks pretty good. Give it a second to secure. And you can still read the sentiment, but yet you get a little bit of the weaving come through. So I just think that's such a really pretty look. So you can see how you've used the weaving die all by itself. And plus, if you end up getting the classic weaving die, you can put them together to create even more looks. It's a beautiful, beautiful background for any frame. So I hope you've enjoyed today's card and today's video, and you can look at us on the Partycraft blog or on our Creative Expressions YouTube channel. Hope to see you again soon.